I'm Sarah from thehomeschoolsearch.com. We're a homeschool curriculum research and planning tool to help make that homeschool curriculum buying experience less overwhelming. Just simplify it, streamline it, make it something that you don't put off to the last minute, right? You know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. One of the things you need when you're researching and planning is a good planner for the homeschool mom. And this might surprise you to find out, but there aren't like a million different types of planners out there that are all encompassing like this one. This one combines your life, meal planning, a to-do list, Christmas, oh, the Christmas pages in here. I cannot wait to show you them. They are fabulous. I feel so organized at Christmas time. Anyway, this is just your life and your homeschool and what books your kids have read, just everything. And it's even got like report cards. I'm getting ahead of myself. This is a fabulous planner. If you're gonna splurge on yourself and get yourself one thing that helps you feel good about your homeschool year coming up, get this planner. I love this planner so much that this is my third year buying it. That's right, I have last year, the 2019, 2020. I bought this last year, used it, absolutely used it was not a waste. And I bought it the year before, which was the first year I even started keeping a homeschool planner. I did my research. Yes, there are cheaper options. This one, this one's worth the money. It's about $30. So this can be your belated Mother's Day gift if it's not already Mother's Day when you're shopping. And it's, it's worth buying it from her website, but you can also find it on Amazon. But you know how Amazon is. The prices fluctuate. Sometimes it's high, sometimes it's low, but ballpark, I would expect to spend about $30 on this planner, which for me felt like a lot but now it's like something I budget for when I'm purchasing homeschool curriculum because I can't imagine doing my homeschool year without it. Okay, so here is the 2020-2021 academic year homeschool planner. So I wanna do a quick flip through here and show you some of the things that make this planner so awesome. There's the lady who made it, we love her. Well, let's start with the beginning of the year here. So there's a picture you can put for the memories like maybe your kids on their first day of school. Here's a chore chart, if you wanna use that. Here's a schedule, if you are someone who has a schedule. A class plan. There's a lot of pages here that you may or may not find helpful. I don't necessarily use all of these. I could see where I might as my kids get older and can do more independently. So you start each month off with a whole month calendar. So this one is for the month of July. This planner starts in July of 2020 and ends in June of 2021. So you start with a whole month, some notes on the side. I often will write like um, maybe some activities that I know we have coming up. If there's some things that I'm like, oh, sometime during the month, I really want to get to the museum. I'll write it down here because I'm not really sure where it's gonna go. Um, but that's that's a helpful little column to have there. Then there's always like a little or, a little article. This one says organized for school. I find these articles just really practical, simple, brief, encouraging. And then there's a shopping list section. So these are actually perforated. Like, oops, you can you know, fold it and tear it. I use these all the time when I'm like using using the planner in the morning when I'm first getting the kids set up for the day, and I start thinking about either things I need to do or um, maybe things I need to get at the store. It's a double-sided list there. Got monthly chores for the kids, household needs, like here it says item, room and person and amount. So like it helps you organize your finances a little bit too. Maybe some projects you need to do, notes. This is a reading list. So you've got this planner set up for four children. So I know a lot of you may have more than four children. I think you can still use this planner successfully but you may have to um, like try and squeeze two kids into one line in places. But if you've got four kids that are reading books independently, you wanna keep track of what books they've read during the year, this is the place you would do that. This is the place you would keep track of the books you are reading aloud to your children or maybe audiobooks that you're listening to as a family. And here's a place for library books, which, I mean, come on, we're homeschoolers. That, that's a very short list. We need like two pages long for the list of library books. Here's a place to write down maybe field trips you wanna do during the month, education goals, you're trying to help somebody learn to write their name in cursive, this place you would write that goal. And then she also gives little ideas for field trips and fun. Again, I don't like necessarily follow these, but sometimes they're good just to kind of get my brain thinking about what are the good activities to do at different times of year. And then this is where you're gonna spend the bulk of your time when you use this planner. This is the weekly 
kind of, it's a week, it's five day week, Monday through Friday, but then there is a little space for Saturday and Sunday, which I do use, especially if maybe we do something on a weekend that I'm gonna count for school, I'll write it there. But it has four lines for each subject. So here on Monday, you start with the first subject is Bible, math, history, science, English, and then there's two blank sections, which you could use for like electives. I usually put music and art or maybe handwriting, just different things like that that I have the kids do, I'll put down in this section. So you have four lines for each subject. I currently have three children, so I use it. In fact, let me go back to the beginning and show you how she recommends you try writing it in. For her children, she recommends that you put the letter of their first name and then what they did for that subject. So that's what I do with my children as well. Thankfully, my kids don't all have the same first letter of their name. You may have to come up with a different system, like a star for your oldest child, a heart for your second child, you know, something that lets you, or maybe write in different colored pens. Um, there's lots of different ways you can do it, but dedicate like one line per child. And oftentimes we do things together. So then I'll just write all three kids' initials and what we did that day for Bible, math, history, science, English, and then spaces for electives as well. So typically how I like to do this, some people will plan their whole week. They'll fill this out and then, then they'll look at it each day and decide what they're gonna do. I don't exactly do that because when does a week ever go the way I planned it would go? I don't know, maybe your week does. My week doesn't, not usually anyway. So typically what I do is I start off really optimistic on a Monday morning and I will write in everything we're going to do and I'll probably write in what we're going to do on Tuesday and then I'll write in a little bit of what we're going to do Wednesday. Typically we have an activity, um, they have like a sport activity on Wednesdays and then Thursdays are when we have co-op um, and sometimes we have other activities as well on Thursdays. So I'll write in the things that I, like the activities that I know for sure are going to happen and that are part of our school I'll go ahead and write those in. I'll write in the things that I am determined we're gonna do, which is usually like what lesson we're gonna get to in math. I'll write that out for the week because that gives me a goal. And if the kids are saying, well, you know, how many lessons do I need to do of this or that? Or how many pages I can tell them what my expectations are for the week. But then I write it in pencil because I know some of these things, I'm gonna think that we're gonna get them done, but we're not. Or we're gonna change plans because we might start reading about something in history and then we get off on a tangent and we want to research, you know, the one time it was, we were reading Caddy Woodlawn and we read about them making birch bark canoes and we didn't know what a birch bark canoe was. That we've seen, you know, log canoes that were like a hollowed out log, but we wanted to know what a birch bark canoe was. So we started researching birch bark canoes and we got off on a tangent about that and ended up learning a lot about canoe construction. That kind of ended up bleeding into the next couple of days and got us off track for what I had planned to do for history. I like to do a combination of planning, but also just recording what we've already done. And that might be how you approach using your planner. And I would still encourage you to try using a planner, even if you don't plan. Instead, record what you've already done and give yourself credit for it. It's like when you make a list, and to do things and then you do something that's not on the list so you write it on the list so that you can cross it off that's kind of what I do with my planner I write it in here that we did it even if I wasn't planning on doing it because it took it took time it took part of my day it took energy it took planning it probably made a mess it helps me see where my time is being spent during the day and what the kids are actually working on and what subjects we're concentrating on the most thoroughly or where, maybe where we need to step it up a little bit so that's how I like to approach this part of the planner. So usually also when I get started during the week, I take a look at this little section which says to do this week. And this is things like, I need to prepare a lesson for the class I'm teaching at our co-op, or you know I need to take a meal to somebody, just different things that I know I have coming up, switch the kids' clothes from winter to summer, things like that. And then I am a meal planner, so I definitely use this section which just kind of gives me an idea of what things I need to take out of the freezer and what our meal plan is for the week. And then I like this spot here, it says self-care, and it just gives you like a day of the week to circle. So I try to do something there if it's go to the store by myself or sometimes, usually once a month, I'll meet a friend for dinner. I will write that in here. And it kind of, it's good too, because then if I have a moment where I'm indulging in self, some self-pity and thinking I never take any time for myself, I can see that yes, I do, 
I take time for myself, kind of, once a week. At least I try to. And then I keep, um, I'll write in any big activities, like for Independence Day, it might be like a family picnic or something. I'll write that in there as well. And so that goes through the whole, the whole year. Every month has a different color scheme, which I think is really fun. Oh, and I was telling you about the Christmas section. The Christmas section. If you do Christmas and you like to be organized about it, this planner is worth it just for the Christmas section. There's like a couple of pages dedicated towards organizing the Christmas season for you. So if you do cards, here's a list of cards. Decorating checklist. I like doing this. I had never done anything like this before, but now I love this part because it reminds me to keep it simple with my decorating. I, I definitely don't fill all of this, but making sure I do things like, like I really like putting a Christmas wreath on my door. It reminds me to make sure that that's one of the things I get to and to not kind of get sidetracked with all the little knickknacks that I could put around. Maybe you need to get some new Christmas lights or something. You can put that on your decorating shopping list. Holiday hopes. I'll write down things there like I want to make sure we spend more time together as a family. I want to make sure we read the Christmas story together in the evenings or watch some movies or whatever. Different Christmas parties, holiday plans, and then a section for gift giving. So again, it's got spaces for four children, family and friends, if you do stocking stuffers, and then if you're running to different stores and you know you need things, you can put them on that part of the list as well. Online shopping. Look, there's a the whole section for Amazon. Yes, please. Other websites, planning traditions. I like that, that it focuses not just on the gifts and the cards, but on the traditions, things you want to do as a family, drive around and see Christmas lights, you know, whatever. And then again, you go back to your whole month at a glance, a little article, shopping lists, the usual things, because you've still got school, and then your week with the subjects and what you're doing with your children there. So that's the year for the most part. And then you come to the end of the year and there are some special end of the year pages here. Semester success. You could just kind of write down what you're proud of your kid for accomplishing. If you have to keep attendance for your state, you can do that right here. Attendance records, one for each child. Here's your year at a glance if you're thinking about things that are coming up in the following year. So here's 2021, 2022. So here is the 2021, 2022. If you haven't gotten the next year's planner quite yet and you need to write down a couple of things coming up, you can do that. So then here's like an end of the year review for each child. And I believe there are report cards. Yes, there are. Okay, so here are the report cards. This is the one thing I would change is that these report cards, though they are beautiful, match the style of the planner. Oh, she changed it this year, you guys. That's awesome. So here you go got some boys or kids who don't like flowers you've got a couple options There's still some flowery ones but anyway that can be a report card for your child as well at the end of the year so that's my review of the well-planned day Rebecca Ferris's homeschool planner her website is called the well-planned gal you will be a well-planned gal you will be a well-planned guy if you're a homeschool dad I'm really sorry about the flowers if you're a guy if you are a dad, a homeschool dad, get this planner, get some duct tape and just cover it right here all over. Now, I'm sorry to tell you, you can't get rid of the flowers on the inside, but at least when you open it, you won't feel like you, you've stolen your wife's planner. Cover it with duct tape if you're a dad. There you go. Anyway, this is worth buying. This is my favorite planner. I feel better about myself when I look through here, you know, like if you feel like, oh gee, we just didn't get that much done today. When you look at this and it's all full of things you did, you realize, oh wow, I actually am doing stuff with these kids, right? I actually am doing a good job. When you feel like you haven't done that much with your kids, I stink at being a homeschool mom. These kids would probably get a better education by like literally anyone other than me. And I know you had that day days, months, weeks. We've all had that day. When you look through here and you see what you did. I don't know about you, but I feel better about myself. I'm like, oh yeah, I did read them a bunch of chapter books this year. We did plant some seeds or go to a museum or whatever. We actually are getting a good education because as moms, it just kind of all tends to like go to the dusty corners of our minds when we start thinking about all the other things we have to do because we're still doing meals, we're still doing activities, still cleaning the house. I don't know about you, but in my case, it's laundry, 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 laundry. So because your mind is full of laundry and meals and 
shopping in a pandemic at the moment, you need a planner to keep it all straight and to remind yourself that you actually are doing a fabulous job. I like doing the laundry when my toddler is napping, but I like folding the laundry by myself when it's quiet, get a can of Diet Coke, listen to a podcast, and fold laundry. But I don't know where all this laundry is coming from.